Sure shot, baby. So good day, everyone. We're here for another episode of the DVD show. So for today, we have a former uh, outside spiker of the DLSU Lady Spikers, and she's also currently playing for the F2 Logistics Cargo Movers, and she's also part of the beach volleyball team. So she's not only in the indoor volleyball, and she also recently tried out for like the national team in, for the SEA Games, I believe. And I'll now welcome to the DVD show, uh, Tin Tiamzo. Thank you for coming on here. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So to start things off, um, uh, I just wanted to ask how you are. Like, yeah, yesterday lang yata, parang they announced that it's gonna be GCQ already starting May 15th. So how have you been doing, naman, with everything so far? Um, I'm I'm thankful na so far I've been safe and healthy. Na wala, I I haven't had any scares really, and um, I'm doing okay. Um, a lot of free time since compared to when we had face to face training. Mm. Um. Yeah, I think uh doing okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. This yeah. whole year. So okay. When did you get back? I think you mentioned earlier that you were in Canada for a long period of time during the quarantine and all the lockdown. So what 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 months did you like get back here? So uh, we were actually scheduled to bubble in March, but then naging MECQ. So. Mm. It got delayed and delayed and delayed. Mm. Now I'm here. <laughs> so yun nga, that was the main factor why I came back. Kasi I was told that we were going to start bubble soon. Oh, okay. We're going to finish my last term in DLSU. So, oh, okay. yeah. so uh, what's your degree naman in DLSU? Uh, yeah, since you said you have one term left. Business management. Ah, okay, okay. Same pala tayo, yeah. <laughs> because yun nga, I was planning to play for season 83 when mm-hmm. after the first cancellation. I was planning to extend, but then um, I was already so delayed. So I was like, I have to finish my my degree. So you know, I was actually supposed to graduate last year October, but then yeah, I was I was planning on playing season 83, but then it got canceled also. So I you know, I I decided to just finish my my degree so that I can play professionally. Ah, okay. So how many years have you been studying in La Salle? But that's why you decided to finally finish it already. Because sometimes it's kind of hard if you've been there na tagal-tagal na. Tas, sa college ka pa rin. Yeah, 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 I saw, like, I think a wake-up call for me was when I saw my high school friends again. And then, like, they have careers. And uh, I just felt so behind. I was like, okay, I, I, have to, I have to get my, my stuff uh, uh, and my professional career soon. And yeah, I think that was my main wake wake up call. And also, I think I was holding on to playing for a last season. But then when they had the second cancellation, I was like, okay, this is a sign that I I really have to I have to finish. So as a professional, naman, do you intend to play until like uh kaya pa until like thirty plus or something, or do you just have the plan like for five years long, seven years? Ano ba yung mga future plans mo in regards to that? As of now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as of now, yeah. Um, I actually, when I, because I went back to Canada, so mm-hmm. I looked for my options there also for my professional career. Um, I saw na, kasi sa Canada, maganda yung, it's like government jobs are really mm-hmm. nice, have, has a lot of benefits. So, nakita ko yung opportunity to be um, a patrol, a uh, border patrol, border officer. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I'm actually planning to stay as of now. Nothing's like concrete. Yeah. So now I'm planning to stay only until the end of the year. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. From there, we'll see. Kung if I want to play more or if I'm gonna pursue that border patrol position, which needs a lot, quite some time to say. There's also like in training for the the job and like some um education in the justice system and yeah a lot of processes so i have to start as early as i can was that like your dream before or para the latter part of your life pa lang na, like in interest dun sa pagiging border patrol well my dream before actually was to be a, a physiotherapist 
Uh, okay. Recruited to the LSU, but then I found out wala sila nung course na yeah. or so I said okay I'll take business management because it's the most like all encompassing course yeah. that we're from one country to the other right mm-hmm. so um I think for me really my dream job whatever it may be is to be able to help people in a way to to be of service like um if if my my dream of being uh, a border patrol won't come into fruition, fruition I, I I would like to be a a coach or wow. or like um a PE teacher in high school because mm. I feel like the best way to help the next generation is to teach the next generation. Yeah. So oh, okay, okay, yeah, that's great. Like in volleyball, a lot of like the veterans and the people that are like successful at the sport, they also do like mga clinics. Like even now, quite online, I see the mga ibang players that they do it. And it seems interesting talaga. And a lot of the kids and the teenagers, they really want to learn from their idols. Eh? So that's really great that you want to be a coach someday. <laughs> yeah. 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 So yung, you mentioned in the start that madaming ang free time for you um, during this whole quarantine. It's like been so long na talaga. Uh, so, ano yung mga, mayroon ka bang mga activities na hindi mo akalain that you'd be doing na you got interested in during this whole period? I didn't know that I would reach the bottom of the Netflix list. <laughs> <laughs> What have you, like, been watching? <laughs> uh, currently, I'm watching Shadow and Bone because I've heard a lot of good things about it. And uh, last na series that na I finished was this Korean. I, I actually, you mentioned that uh, not be uh what do you want something that you wouldn't thought you'd be doing yeah i hindi ako fan ng korean novella yeah. me also actually <laughs> I recommended um reply 1988 and it was really good it was worth it kahit na sobrang hot sa episode it was nice ah uh, okay okay i haven't I, watched it <laughs> right it's a nice story it's not like the typical love story na ano pero it's yeah. it's like a neighborhood but yeah yun. and also i i i went back to my uh creative side because i love painting and drawing oh okay, okay. in quarantine i finished a commission for my sister <laughs> during my stay in philippi uh, in canada and then i finished a painting for my friend uh gaya Baraba for her birthday so yeah Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. So yeah, that's great because dami ng mga ano, like that this podcast. I never thought I'd start a podcast like when I was in La Salpa like first year. And then wala lang like I really in- into it and like people do random stuff now and they, they really didn't uh, like see themselves doing it parang ganun. Yeah. Yeah, keep our sanity then, diba? Oh, parang parang papaulit-ulit na yung ginagawa, nabobore na. Eh. So you need to do something different. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, Yeah, and you mentioned earlier also that you really like helping people. So some of the like fans or reporters they say that playing volleyball again will help like the mental health also of the fans because they'll get entertained and like they'll have a sense of normalcy with the with the whole situation. Like if there's a season, whether it's in a bubble setup or not. So for you, uh, what do you think about that? And yeah, how's the team doing? The man in preparation. It's, I think they believe. I believe like there might be a bubble soon. Yeah. Um. Yeah. They're definitely planning all this because we're scheduled to play in July if all goes well, mm-hmm. and I really hope all goes well because cutting cutting na din kami maglaro ng volleyball. Yeah. You know, that we've been working at. We've been practicing that craft for. For me, it's only been like five years. Imagine for like at the Abbey, like the veterans in our team, like at the Abbey and mm-hmm. at the. Play that for most of their life, they about parang to suddenly stop, parang sobrang nakakaara din. And for the fans also, the avid fans na, di ba, they look forward to, let's say, a weekend game, to watching it. It's like a, a way for them to de-stress and to just enjoy. Yes. Yeah, I think it would be so nice to have volleyball back again. And I really hope um, that they organize everything thoroughly para makabalik na kami sa court. Yeah. So how about you personally? You mentioned yeah, that it's kind of tough because it's been like a habit for you guys to have volleyball all throughout the year. So how do you like keep in shape and 
Yun, yun nga, it's hard to get motivated also paulit-ulit na lang na sa bahay ka or sa gym nearby to keep working out. So, how kamusta naman yung struggle mo with that in keeping in shape like for the bubble? Uh, I think it's been, for me personally, struggle siya in a way na my body was so used to hard training and like really pushing myself to the limit because I know that I'm I have to prepare for this tournament and I have to excel this in this um in this league but then to have that mindset be you know parang thrown into the void kumbaga yeah. you know uh, you don't know when you're gonna play again or you don't know when you're gonna play in the court even so to to keep in shape it's hard some there are days talaga na it's like this again work out na lang walang like you know yung kasi it, volleyball is also a very team dynamic sport, di ba? Not like swimming or tennis where it's just individual and you can condition yourself and ikaw lang. But like, volleyball, I miss the chemistry on the court with my teammates. Yung mga, uh, ano, biruan in between drills. Yun yung mga malilit na bagay na you yeah. thought for granted. But then, once this whole thing happened, it's you're like, oh yeah, that was a big part of my life. Yeah, that's true. And I, lalo na for F2 kasi diba, you guys have, most of you guys have been playing since La Salle. So yung chemistry talaga nabuo na ever since college. Tapos same coaching staff, same system pagdating sa pro level. Talagang parang ma- ma- malalim na talaga yung pinagsamahan nyo ever since college. So how is that naman now? Like you guys do Zoom. Like I heard sila Don nga and De- Desiree. They, say, they said that you guys do Zoom. I'm not sure how often. But do you guys yeah. still I know, like enjoy your own company kahit hindi face-to-face? Mm-hmm. Like, my, we message each other just to make sure that I know, we're, we're okay. Yeah. <laughs> we're still... Also, yeah. yeah, Zoom, sometimes we catch up with each other and stuff. Just to, it's, you know, just to check up on each other really mean, mainly ganon. Kasi nga, parang we're like a family. So, we, we have to make sure that okay lang kami. Yeah. That's really great to hear. I think magtutuloy tuloy naman yan. Nakahalata naman ng mga fans yun sa court when you guys are playing. Like when you guys are down, you got each other's backs to bounce back kahit tambak na ganun. Nakikita naman yun ng mga tao. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And one other aspect uh, that, uh, or one other like uh, thing that you did just recently was the tryouts for the beach volleyball in Subic. I think that's where you guys did the tryout. So yeah. how was that? How was that? journey naman. It was really kind of tough. Like, I saw pictures yung sa indoor volleyball that uh, they were, like, PPEs or they were wearing, like, masks pa. Like, going to the uh, going to the venue and stuff. How about you guys? Kamusta naman yung training and the process of getting selected for the tryout? Well, for, I know, for the tryout, the, the coach contacted me and then he wanted me to try out. So, I was like, okay, there's, I have nothing to lose. So, I, I went for the tryout and it's like once in a while, I mean, once, in, once in a lifetime opportunity to, to be invited. Um, so I was like, okay, well, if I plan on going back to Canada at the end of the year, why not, right? And, and then when we were there, it's a tryout. It's different from the indoor because indoor, it's in an enclosed space. Yeah. There's, right? But uh, in beach, you know, the sun's out and the the virus <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yeah it was it was nice but like off the court we were socially distanced her mask and face uh face shield were on but inside the court uh since there's only two of us right even uh we're just not allowed to give a high five or hug oh okay unless you're like like let's say Ponce and Rondina who's been quarantined together for time, yeah. right yeah. But for me, I was I was fortunate enough to be partnered up with at the Javelin Gonzaga, and that was oh. like a star struck. <laughs> yeah, she's a veteran, talaga. Yeah. And I was like, cool. Yeah. Like, right? yeah. <laughs> but I didn't expect her to be that nice. I thought she'd be like a really serious person because you know all all of her uh, uh, because of all of her um, achievements. So mm-hmm. I was. I was taken by surprise of how accommodating she was and how understanding and how nice she was. And it was nice to be partnered up with her. 
how long was the tryouts? And then were you guys like living there or uwi an ba yon ng time? Uh, one day, just one day. Oh, one day lang. Yeah. We got tested prior to the tryout and then self isolated for seven days before tested being tested. So yeah, it was it was nice. And then they also had like every every stop. Like let's say from the leaving point to the entrance of the tar- the yeah. there's temperature check checkpoints. Oh okay okay yeah. So they were really strict with the uh, health and safety protocols because yeah, it's really dangerous. There's like a lot of you guys there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How about the man? Is how much is your confidence with the team? Like you uh, like they already uh, released the lineup, I believe, of the. Players that could be that will play for SEA Games and the tournament. So how you mentioned CC Rondina and Bernadette Pons as like the stars, talaga. And people like know them, talaga, as the stars of beach volleyball. How confident are you with the team and moving forward? I think they're gonna do really well for SEA Games, because yeah, like I said, uh, CC, CC and uh, Pons, they've been partners for five years now. So yeah, I matagal. think. They they know they really know each other and it showed also in the tryout. Parang they don't even need to speak inside the court. Like it's something where you know ano nang gawin ng isa't isa. And I think their dynamic is really uh, important. That's I think that's the main difference with indoor also. Hindi kasi you can't have the by your side or during timeouts. It's just you and your partner, so you really have to. And you really have to have good chemistry. So I think they have that, and also the athleticism. If you see, if nakita mo yung katawan nila, nila, <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh yeah. But they're 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 gonna be. They're yeah. Gonna be- I I I I listened to their interview uh, last Tuesday I think in the game and yeah I I could see like they were so dark they were talaga hard working trading kahit maaraw and summer ang init na ngayon and they're still working hard talaga so I, yung sa katawan sure sa picture lang sa TV mal makikita but then for you you saw them talaga in real life so iba yun <laughs> yeah yeah. So I think we are really we have a chance to do well in the sea games for both indoor naman and uh beach. Yeah, it's yeah. So for the next part, uh, I also ask these questions to my previous guests like to go back to their childhood and their upbringing and how they were able to uh work hard and the the process and the journey of how they how you guys are today like professional volleyball players. So to begin with, uh what was like your ch- what were your childhood activities? And was like your vo- volleyball your first love, or were you like trying out other things first, like arts or other sports, theater? I don't know, like other things before you love volleyball. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, my childhood, was, I made it colorful because I didn't really have kids around me. <laughs> so <laughs> the age gap between me and my sister before me is nine years. So oh. I really had no one to play with, and we just moved to Canada. Right? Well. Mm-hmm. well When we were still living in the province before we moved to Canada, I was I, I would play outside and stuff. But then when we moved to Canada, I had to entertain myself. Mm. So the first, I think the first sport that I really liked that I tried in grade three was soccer. Oh, I I I fell in love with soccer because it was the only thing that the kids were playing at my school. So I was like, why not just join them? Mm. <laughs> so okay. <laughs> Someone asked me to play with them, so I was like, "Okay, I'll play." And then I really liked it. Like there was a time where I would just randomly watch soccer matches on TV, mm-hmm. and I even asked my mom, "Ma, can we? Can I join a soccer club?" <laughs> and <laughs> she saw how they would train and how they would play, even in the snow. So she's like, "No, no, no, no soccer play in any weather." And I'm like, and so in the next in grade four, um, I. I was asked. To, uh, I was being tagged with people, and then the coach of track and field saw me, and then they asked for me in class, and then I was like, "Am I in trouble?" <laughs> But mm-hmm. asking for my name, <laughs> asked me, "Have you ever ran like for competitively for track?" Yeah. No, I'm nine years old. <laughs> <laughs> I ran for fun. So yeah, and yeah. then. 
first that I, I really liked the track and field. I, I used to do the long jump and 100 meter dash. That, that was grade four, grade five, grade six. Matagal pala. Yeah, but uh, during that time, I was also introduced to basketball. Oh, okay, okay. I like playing with guys. Like, ayoko yung mga dainty activities. In- <laughs> yeah. I played with guys most of my time in elementary. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Basketball was the, the next sport that I really, really, really like. And I still like it. I, I like playing for fun. I actually played competitively from grade 5 to grade 9. So, like, 11 to 15 years old. Yeah. I played. And then I stopped basketball because in high school, there wasn't like a good basketball coach. Oh, and then okay. I, for a time, like grade 8, grade 9, I played volleyball and basketball. But then I grew to love volleyball more because of the coach, of the of my high school coach. Parang he really, he really took his time to develop each of us and that's when I was like oh this could be something that I would want to do until college and so my and then there was a time my dad had to make me my mom and dad made me choose between volleyball and basketball because it was already taking too much <laughs> of my time in terms of <laughs> yeah <laughs> so they're like your school's your school <laughs> gonna get worse so you have to <laughs> now and so I was like in grade 10 I chose volleyball and it was hard for a time because I really liked balls, but I had to choose so. And I think I made the right decision. Yeah, so, yeah. for sure. For sure. <laughs> Successful here at the DLSU at least. Yeah. So that's definitely a great choice. But going back to the previous sports that you tried as a child, so maybe you could say that you weren't like as mature yet because you were young, mga nine years old, ten years old, pa. But what could you say that you brought to the that you were able to bring to volleyball? Like maybe in terms of attitude or skills or yung mentality uh ano yung mga aspects of any of the three sports that you mentioned that you brought to volleyball for then ever since grade 10 until maybe now i think i'd be super i'm i'm super grateful for the track background track and field background because mm-hmm. basic of yun yung basics of athleticism right yeah the running and then i think from there i developed Kasi yung vertical ko, yung one aspect of my game that I can really probably say that I have, I'm medyo, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yung, vertic- yeah. I think yung vertical jump ko I got from doing long jumps and mm-hmm. sprints at a really young age. Yeah, that, that's a pretty tough sport, I believe. Like, people might think it's, like, basic because you're just running and, like, you can run in the village. Pero hindi talaga, yun, mahirap talaga. And yun, nakikita naman, nag-reap yung reward sa uh, volleyball. <laughs> and I think sa soccer and, ano, basketball, I, I learned the value of, ano, teamwork at a really young age. Mm-hmm. So, I think that carried over to volleyball, especially volleyball. Yeah, that's personally also I like team sports. I don't know, like it makes helps you deal with people and different personalities. Like in yeah, you mentioned basketball, and you really have like four other players on the court. Like similar to volleyball, you have what five other teammates that you need to work with, and kaite ba ba yung personalities niyo? It really challenges you to like play with them. Well, for you guys to win. Yeah, exactly, the ba and yeah. like lang siya ano, applicable in sports but also especially for us the bad business management students we have to yeah. learn how to uh, deal with different kinds of personalities you know <laughs> and I think volleyball really helps with that yeah I, I, I forgot who guest I had but then or I listened to it somewhere lang na nung swimming or individual sports medyo nahihirapan siya kasi siya lang yung nagsiswim tas parang no one's challenging him like paulit-ulit lang yung ginagawa niya so, medyo for other people that might be hard, if a team sports, marin siyang teammates or coaches that are gonna like motivate him and yung relationship nila, they build good relationships, kite off the field or off the court. And you know, yun, it helps in life, as you mentioned, like in other ventures that you go into. <laughs> yeah, that's what, like, yeah. Diba, like yung, the only, your only com- competition is yourself. <laughs> mm-hmm. Keep up, keep up your everything, everyday thing. 
yeah that's why you need to have like maybe a different attitude or like a different kind of motivation in individual sports but yeah i'm proud of the people that succeed also at that field super super ano sila, mental toughness is like different yeah. level yeah for sure like i can't know i don't know how i'd do that if i was an athlete also <laughs> yeah like, you're just competing with yourself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, mahirap yun. Tapos every day of the year yun lang yung ginagawa. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yung um, coach boy, you said also that in high school that he had a great influence on you and why you love volleyball. So were there specific aspects maybe on the court or off the court that really stuck to you now, even now? He, the thing I like about him, our coach, his name's Kim Moore, Uh, was that he emphasized the value of hard work over talent. Mm, okay. As um, I know even camaraderie and sense of family within the team, which I I also find similar to the coach Ramil, but like coach Ramil does it in a different um, what do you call this? Different strategy of how to deal with it, where and my other coach, but it's like the same lesson that they want to teach. Yeah. Years, right. So I think yun yung super nagustuhan ko sa kanila. Like people who work hard will always outperform the people who are gifted or talented because they know that they have to strive for something, so they will keep working on it. Whereas people who are talented might like slack off, de ba? Because oh, you know, I have, I can do that. So yeah, yung gusto nang gusto ko. So nung nung time na yon, you were like grade ten. Anong year ka parang na ipaisip ka na napupunta dito sa Philippines? For like a few years after that. Like two years after that, um, my sister met this uh, alumni from La Salle. There's there's like an alumni association in La Salle. Yeah. So like. So she met him, and then at the chat, Cruz yeah. uh, was invited to visit the alumni association there in Lasal, in Vancouver. So like, we had a scrimmage game, kami sa ano, and then like volleyball was becoming a big sport here. Mm-hmm. So it was like, oh, what do you try out for, <laughs> you know, Lasal, and see how it goes, you know, because my sister also played for Lasal for like six months. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. masters lang siya sa Lasal and then we had to move to Canada so she left. But yeah, yun. So, naging teammate yun siya ni Ata. Si Ate Chak, who's, di ba? Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. So, wait. Saan ako? <laughs> yun. <laughs> naging teammate sila. So, yun. Like, like, friendly scrimmage with her when she was in Vancouver and then she asked me to, like, you know, just give it a ch- give it a shot. So, I was like, Okay, well, that's that's when I first started to think, oh, maybe I could. And then I searched the, the La Salle team. <laughs> of course, I had to do my research, right? Yeah. Parang it's a big decision to move from Canada and then to go back in Manila. And like, well, I've never lived in Manila, so yeah, big decision talaga. And then I was like, well, yeah, it seems like a possible career. And mm. my my sister who played, Like Coach Ramil is a good coach. I think you like playing there, and I think you'll be pushed to your limit, really, in the best way possible. And like, okay, yeah, okay, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah. <laughs> so before deciding to move here in the Philippines, you mentioned that it's gonna be a major adjustment. That's why you researched and like checked out what you're getting yourself into. But then before moving to the Philippines. Medyo nahirapan ka ba adjusting again to the Filipino culture? Kasi the last time you were here was you when you were younger. Like, do you have like uh, traditions or uh, so, uh, habits that you do na normal Filipino families do even if you were in Canada that maybe help you adjust well again with the life here in Manila? Yeah. Um, in in our household in Canada, everything's pretty much Filipino. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Pag open mo pa lang ng door, may mo na yung adobo or yung bulat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, my my mom and my dad really uh, made sure na we kept it as Filipino as possible para hindi na ma- so that we don't forget the Filipino culture that we grew up with and the fa- values that we learned as a Filipino family. And 
my my mom actually wanted me to practice more English at home. At, oh. Like we first moved there, and I was like, I don't want. To. I'm I'm already tired from speaking English at school. I want to speak English. <laughs> Held me back a few years in English, like as yes, English at English as a second language at school. But I didn't mind. I didn't want to lose my. I know. My skill in Tagalog, di ba? <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. Paganda pag bilingual talaga. Exactly. Yeah. So, let's just speak Tagalog at home. <laughs> I don't want to speak any more English. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that's really great. Like I've heard people na kahit na sa abroad sila na they're able to still speak Filipino. So when they go here, parang hindi mo mahalat that they were living abroad for like several years already because they're able to speak Filipino pa din. So that's great. And it also helps that in Vancouver they have a big Filipino community, so we would go to all the parties and the fiestas. Mm, okay, yeah, that's a huge advantage that other Canadian cities don't really have. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. when you moved here in the Philippines, was it uh, how long did you take before doing that? This making that decision since you said it was major, and yeah, how. It, it, it took, did it take any like adjustment when you got here or no? Na? Uh, so I first had the idea of moving here around 2014, right? So mm-hmm. I research, I talk to coach and see what they have to offer. And then I tried out 2015 February. I tried out for like a week. I, I spent a week here and then to see how the training was. And then I also took the exam, the entrance exam during that week. So I was like, okay. And then I got a tour of the campus and everything. So I was like, this is like, it's nice. Yeah. <laughs> Not what I expected, but it, it was, it was, it was like a different, because when you're young, it's like, you have nothing to lose. I was like, you know what? I'll just try it. <laughs> and that's okay. I decided to pack my bags and then come here. I came here July, late July 2015. That's when I started full-time training with La Salle. So, di ka naman na homesick or talaga madali lang yung adjustment mo like with your teammates and your coaches and even your maybe classmates in La Salle? Uh, first, first, um, I was a culture shock siguro being classmates with like daughters and sons of like big corporation names. <laughs> Wait, what? You're the, and then you're just like, wait, I'm just, you know. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. From a different country, but you know, I think yun yung unang culture shock ko na, wow, my possibility that like I could build my my network already from being class with some big names, and also I think um, culture wise. I think yung ano lang, it's yung lib, lib, kasi diba parang sa Canada medyo liberated, liber, liberated thinking. Yeah. Ano, once you're 18. Yeah, independent. Independent ka nun. Yeah. Here, yun din, I think, I thought that I would have that freedom, like the same freedom, but then it's like, oh wait, they, <laughs> you know, still pretty young, the team would be would have to be, you know, accountable for whatever happens to me. <laughs> I'm their responsibility. So I was like, okay, I have to be more careful. And then I think homesickness then was also a factor. I didn't I didn't uh, expect it to be that bad. <laughs> like the first mm-hmm. months was okay. Because okay. my mom and my dad were here for the first few months. And then when they went back to Canada, I was like, oh, shoot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, Oh, I'm I'm alone. Like family-wise, I don't have anyone except for my cousins. Yeah, who live in Manila. But like, other than that, like, and my cousins, I haven't seen for so many years. So we didn't we didn't, we didn't really know each other well. But yeah. now we're really close. Back then, I was like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> awkward. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was also thankful that my teammates in the dorm. In the dorm was they were really nice and they made sure that I my the sense of family was still being felt within the team. 
Yeah, so you could. It's really tough. Like, kung ari nga ngayon pandemic, like I don't see my friends often, and it's not even. It's, this is only like a, maybe a year. Pero you, sure, kung college, medyo mahaba na yun that your parents maybe are in Canada and you're here, so it's kind of tough to you know really I don't know get acclimated with your teammates lang as your closest people that you can reach out to. Pero at least they went the extra effort and make sure that you're part of like their group or their their, their team, the barcada. Yeah. Ano na namin sila sa sa sistema na to. Like there's there aren't any clicks within the team. Like mm-hmm. ayaw ko na yung coach yung maggrupo grupo. But you you're not you're you won't. Hindi hindi mo man I mean hindi mo din man maavoid yung like you have that one person that you can always run to. But as a as a whole, we all get along together. Walang ano walang masamang no bad blood kung baga. It's like walang yung selo sila or ganun mm. we, we bond as a family so well meron bang isang tao or something na yun nung unang anong hindi ka pa masyadong close sa kanila that approached you and then tinulungan ka to get close to the whole team as he's mentioned nga parang close na close talaga kayo ngayon like wala pa masyadong groups mm. um, first roommate ko is Ate Duki and now ah, okay. like our our friendship has gone even deeper like mm. no first Well, we weren't that close for second wow. first year and then halfway through second year we like hindi hindi kami ganun ka close but then nung latter part nung second year we got in closer like kasi kami lang yung mga tao yung kami ako siya at si Jen eh kami lang yung mga tao sa dorm so like we would have to you know entertain ourselves yeah and she took me on like outings minsan mag we watch a movie just the two of us and me also oh, okay Yeah, that's really great. Because si Aduke, parang tagal nerens sa lasal eh. So, the struggles that na pinagdadaanan niya, she can really help you with the experience of being in lasal. Because I think I don't know how many years there is sa lasal, and she played pa supposedly in last year then with you and uh, Michelle Cobb, right? So it was really great that you guys became close. Yeah. Yes, and then. Moving from Canada, that you were playing volleyball, and then you played here, and sure, rookie year, mo palang yata, um, in champion na yata yung lasal, and then damen tao na manunod sa every game niyo, like every arena, puno yung arena cheering for lasal. So how was the adjustment, naman for you? Because I think I'm just assuming that it wasn't that many people watching when you guys play in Canada. So how was the adjustment? Kina bahan ka ba sobra? Like how how did you like get through it also? First game ko na facial ako. <laughs> yeah, just think na facial ako nung first game. Tapos I think super hindi ko inexpect na ganun ka daming. Well, I I like I did my research. I mm. knew it was a big deal. Yeah. And my mga fans and everything. Pero like the, the main reason why I wanted to play here was this full ride scholarship. Mm. That's one of free education, right? Mm, for sure. <laughs> mahal din ang tuition sa Lasal. Exactly. Mahal yeah. pa na. And they're like uh, internationally accredited, diba? Yeah. So, okay, that's a good school. Why not? Mm-hmm. But I didn't expect in sa game na ganun, ganun yung gravity. Especially when you first enter the arena. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Diba? Parang nakakaano. Lalo na yung when you the, the drums. Mm-hmm. Kasi sa mga tournament namin or games sa Canada, like, yung mga parents lang namin yung nag-picture. <laughs> uh, parang yung games lang namin sa high school, yung parents lang namin yun yun din, tsaka a few other people. Pero pag sa mga MOA na, wala na, it's everyone na talaga. Even San Juan Arena. Yeah. yeah. Kahit San Juan lang nga, medyo na makakaano. Yeah. When you look to the highest part, parang if there's a lot of people na ma- makakalunod din. Big adjustment. Yeah. yeah. So, nung, nung naka-adjust ka na eventually, was it more like sanayan lang or did you do things in order to adjust? Um, Sanayan lang, I think. Like, I remember my whole school first year, sobrang, it was, oh, hindi ko na nga masyadong maalala. I think I only had like one or one good, one or two good games. <laughs> <laughs> Kasi nga, sobrang, you know, bata mo pa and Everything's just overwhelming, new experiences. So, I think, nasa na yan lang talaga. Second year, mas okay-okay na. Oh. <laughs> I did not remember that many things. Yeah. So, so kumusta, 
<laughs> Sorry, what? That, that we we won. Yun. <laughs> ah, yeah, season 78. Yung three peat season 78, 79, 80. Yeah. So, kamusta naman yung uh, veteran uh, leadership? Kasi season 78 was the final year of Silamika era. I think that group. So, you know, then that's when you came in. So, how, how did they influence the team? Like, as a veteran, and you were like a rookie pa during the time. So, how did you benefit from their mentorship or their veteran presence also? Like, initially, kaagad. What I really liked about our seniors was that they didn't um, abuse their position of power. Because they, they have, because yeah, they're, they're like the right right hand man of coach kumbaga they're they're like an extension of coaches um up um you know this leadership kumbaga so they didn't really they didn't abuse that power given to them they made sure na lahat kami um we felt included we felt valued kahit na mga rookie lang kami and they they really if let's say I didn't have a good game, they they would um cheer me up, then they'd be like, oh, okay lang yan, may next game pa, may next training pa, mm. just keep pushing, maka ano pa din, rookie, rookie ka pa lang, ang dami ka pang mapagdadaan. Like, they were so encouraging, hindi sila mm. yung senior na, oh, rookie ka, kailangan mo gawin to. Well, we have our rookie duties, but, you know, uh, other than that, outside of the court, they were, they were super, super good. And I think, were lucky na sila yung seniors ko. Because I, I heard other stories from other teams na when you're a rookie, talagang hampas. <laughs> hampas <laughs> medyo, medyo ganun na na levels na utusan ka, ganito, yeah. ganito. Yeah. Na parang ano ka lang, secretary. Na. Yeah. Mararamdaman mo talaga na may seniority. It's kind of hard. I know some teams are like that. But I'm not sure if I'm for it. <laughs> yeah. I think there's a fine line also of... I, we respected them like we feared now you know ma- ano kami pero there's also the love and the care na we felt from them so it mm-hmm. wasn't just a one way respect ano two way ano din siya yeah yeah that's really integral i believe in like yeah nga sa team sport na kailangan two way talaga kahit senior ka parang there's still human beings and a volleyball player same lang din naman kayo so yung age lang yung parang difference talaga so it parang you need to treat them properly pa din. Mm, exactly, oh, yeah. Yeah. So you mentioned also in your second year na parang nasanay ka na and you were able to like get yourself acclimated with the whole UAAP crowd and uh, oppo- in your opponents and teammates. What could, what would you say is was your breakout game yung talagang dun ka, dun ka, dun ka talaga na hanap na, na ni Coach Ramil na ikaw yung parang isa sa mga magagaling na outside spikers ng DLSU and you got consistent playing time. I think yung one asset well it do I think <laughs> game I hindi ko siya ma-pinpoint mm-hmm. but I think coach chose me to fill in the role for the missing seniors the following year kasi yung foundation ko as a receiver oh yeah yung, yun yung advantage ko over other outside hitters at that time sa pool namin. But they were also really good but I, I don't know hindi ko din alam bakit ako yung pinili ng coach but I think yung receive talaga yung what set me apart. Kasi in terms of hitting I may was so much I will admit na may <laughs> may talaga ang lutong ng palo niya. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. So I think yun nga. <laughs> I think it was the, the the reception part yung nakita ni coach siguro sa game ko na na sa potential in I guess. <laughs> For game wise, I think yung pinaka breakout game na maalala ko talaga was I guess nung finals na <laughs> season 79. Final season 79. Oh, yeah. okay. First game. First game ng finals. Yun yung pinaka-breakout game. Ko. Was that Naman. in MOA? I don't remember. I don't know if I was there. But like, yeah. Araneta, I think. Ah, okay. okay. Araneta yung game. Game one, game two. Was Araneta. Yeah, I remember. 
game game one was I forgot. I I, I think I was there because game. Two, I was definitely there when you guys won, and Des was the finals MVP. But game one, I don't remember. Pero baka I was there. <laughs> Pero maalala yung game na nagbreakout. <laughs> How many points did you score in that game? Fifteen. Ah, okay, okay. Pero what part of the season yun talagang nagamit kina? Kasi nga sa mo no season seventy eight medyo ah uh, hindi ka pa masadong babad. Pero nung seventy nine, like so right from the onset, bababad ka na kagad. Yeah, ako na yung first six ng season 79. Ah, uh, okay, okay. So, most probably it's because of your hard work no off-season then and practices. Kaya siguro, kahit si May nga, si Simon mas malakas pumalo. Pero baka sa off-season and mga practices at tune-up games, ikaw yung nag-flourish. Maybe! <laughs> yeah. That means I don't have a run ng brain ni Coach. But Coach, knowing Coach, he has like a really far um vision when it comes to team stuff like minsan na predict na na yung mangyayari hindi pa mm-hmm. hindi pa namin na conceptualize pero siya nakita niya na <laughs> oh yeah he yun yung ano niya strength i feel like yun yung advantage over all the other coaches and halata ka rin naman if you watch like most or all of the DLSU games yeah oh so Since now you were what a three-time champion right from like your first three years, and as your as like a individual and in, that's part of all the championships. How did you remain like motivated all all across those three years? Ah, uh, like because, of course, when champion, normally the other athletes, parang they let their guard down, na and you know, feeling nila sila na yun na sa taas, so wala na magkatalo sa kanila. Pero for you, then. You roll mo din nag increase from seventy eight, seventy nine, and eighty. So, paano naman yung for you individually? Like, what did you do with yourself or with your teammates? Ako kasi very ano ako self defeating. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> hindi ako yung nakakontento lang sa pagperform ko. Like, konting pagalit lang. I I will overthink. I will overthink and i ano ko din yon downfall ko din yon na hmm. I overthink things na it shouldn't be over. Overthought. <laughs> mm-hmm. Na, um, I think, pag, I'm, I never see myself as someone. Oh, nandyan na ako. I'm at the top of my game. Ganon. I never saw myself as that. When I, when I, when I rewatch games, parang I see more of my errors than yung mga nagagawa ko ng stuff. Like, no, I like why am I? That was such a bad pass. Oh, that's a bad. Uh-huh. Beat. That's why I'm gonna, but but outside, but into the net, ganon. Mm. I think that was a big part of why I never, as individually, I, hindi ako na contento with my game or my play. Umaga, even if I, if even if yun, yeah, we achieved all those championships. <laughs> yeah, I feel it's not. Maybe yeah, for some it might be negative if it gets too much. But there's like it's good, yeah. Like if you watch film, that was you nitpick like certain parts of the game wherein. You struggle. Tapos pag next practice or yeah, the next few months, para you make sure na hindi mo na mauulit yung mistakes na yon, or you improve or you enhance your skills on that part of the game. Parang I think it helps. I guess maybe in at first it's kind of hard to overthink because parang bahay di mo na isip yung kalagang mo isipen. Pero for the future, I think it's really gonna benefit you na as a person and for your team also. And I think yun nga, when I was younger, I over I overthink a lot. And I think as I grew older, instead of overthinking about it, I I was already thinking about ways to fix it. Yeah, maybe something like that. Better once you get older and once you accepted that part of yours. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah. That's fine. I think it's part of growing up also. So yeah, it's not really like a negative aspect. <laughs> yeah. So you mentioned that in the previous years you had really great. Veteran players and leaders like Sila Ara and Mika, and then in season eighty one and eighty two, even with that one game, you were one of the veterans. Now, like Des was the team captain, I think, no eighty one, but you were one of the veterans now on the team. And yeah, that was when Sila Julina really that was that was when she got really great at her craft. I think it was like first year palang niya, and you guys were lost in the final four. Pero as a leader nga, since you said that your leadership no. Vets more from sila even sila Kiana Don majority that batch. I feel that they were really great leaders also with Jim Fajardo. How did you see yourself as a leader 
um, how can you describe yourself as a leader and kano kalaki yung tulong nila in molding you as a leader also for the team? Um, so as a leader, I see myself. Ako yung tipong I wanna show my leadership through action, action, mm-hmm. you know, inside and outside the court. Like let's say my certain team rules that you have to follow, I will lead by example, and I, I will, yeah, yeah, I, I, I want to lead by example, and I try my best to do that. Uh, and also in the court, ganon, ganon din na parang gusto kong gawin uh, is for to be to to be an insp- a source of inspiration for that my younger teammates, uh, especially if they're overwhelmed. Kumbaga, like, nung hindi ko nga ang first team namin, I'm sure a lot of them were overwhelmed. Uh, for me and Adaduki and Michelle, we needed to be the steady, like, kumbaga, kami yung, ano, yung lighthouse. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Parang steady present, ganun. Yeah. yeah. Just follow us. We lead you, ganun. Ganun yung gusto kong, na, ano, and I hope I did that. And I think for my team, yun nga, my seniors, they didn't, Great. Kasi sila lahat, they all showed different kinds of leadership. And at the Kimi, lahat sila uh, showed through by example. That's why I also want to show by example. And yeah. And I think the best way to be a leader also is to gain the respect of your teammates through kindness and um, through kindness, the, the right amount of discipline. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Supreme bond, the ba na the sense na you will always have their back as as much as they have yours. Yeah, in my personal opinion, you guys did well, naman. Especially in season eighty one, like there were and even eighty two, like when I with them one game, mahalat tamo yung rookies. Parang sanay na sanay na sila maglaro with you guys. Like you gave them the freedom. Maybe you empowered them to like play how I'll play in their own game, even if they were like yun nga, younger. You guys were like fifth year, fifth playing year na. Kasi I covered that game actually for like I wrote about that game one game lang ng Lasal for that season. And that's why I saw how terrific the performances of the players were. Like yung mga ibang players nga, I researched it pa the day before because I wasn't familiar with them entering. Yeah. So syempre kailangan malaman ko sino sila like how will I write about them. Pero when I saw them I was like wow ang galing ah para may chance Lasal mag-champion tapos hindi naman natuloy yung season. So sayang lang. That's always gonna be a heartbreak for me. Yeah. <laughs> mas malala pa sa, if someone broke up with me, mas malala pa rin yung pain na na. <laughs> <laughs> Para incomparable yung pain no, nga, no? Kasi, you guys won pa against Ateneo and Ateneo, I bet, were like the favorites because they got Maragino cut, cut and cut back for that year and I don't think they were expected to come back na. Hmm. But then, just... <laughs> Yeah. So how how about like the future? Like you said, yeah, that you it was the biggest what if one of the biggest what ifs and heartbreaks that you didn't get to finish the season with them. How confident are you with the team? Like I don't know who's gonna be the leader now. If it's still a Julina, like if there's a season, like who's the team captain or something. But how confident are you with the team? And maybe also what are the stuff they could improve on? And uh, most likely. The, the leaders will be yun yeah, sila Jelena, Mario. Uh, kasi they're the next in line. Kasi ang laki, medyo malaki din yung age gap namin. I think, I mean, uh, for year, like yung years being in the team, yung gap. So I think four years or three years yung gap. So from ours, us being seniors, yung mga sophomores agad yung, <laughs> yung next in line to the team, right? And I'm pretty confident they're they're a talented. I know if they're gonna watch this, won't get it in your head. But they are <laughs> they're, they're a talented um group of uh young girls, young women. Because sobrang coach really took the time to get all of them. But he saw potential in each and every one of them, and it shows even in that first game, right? Uh, I'm excited to see them flourish in their own careers and to to someday be the the queens of Philippine volleyball. Because not only are they skilled, they also have height. Like Thea, si Leila, the bang yeah. six. <laughs> yeah, lucky. First time to see that for me in Philippine volleyball, hmm. in my own team. 
kasi we didn't have tall players unlike ng NU dati si, si Ate Jaja. Santiago. Santiago, yeah. So it was it was exciting for I was very excited for that. Sayang nga na we did showcase their ability for the rest of the season but I know that they can be they're, they're gonna be they're gonna be unstoppable I feel like they, they just have to work hard and I think key thing for them is to be uh, humility to be humble always no matter how how great the height that they will accomplish always keep, keep it on the ground and yung, I think what will be key to their success Yeah, I agree with you also. Like, yung immense potential nila. Siyempre, iba pa rin yung makikita sa court. I think we only saw it in a game. Pero since nga you we were with them, you could see, like, the talent that they have. So I feel that it's the execution na lang in the game will be really important. Kasi lalo na ngayon, um, tagal na nung pandemic. Like, they haven't even been practicing. So siyempre, parang yung self-discipline din nila. Like, keeping in shape and making sure pagbalik, they're still at the top top-notch level and being able to compete with the best. Kasi kunwari yung mga kalaban nila, baka nag-work out na sila, walang ginagawa, naiwanan na sila. So yun yung, I think, important din na kailangan nilang maisip. Kasi, yeah, yung season, like kayo, you never knew na magbabubble na in like, July or something. Baka sila bigla na rin, pwede na mag-training, mag-ulat na lang sila. And like, you know, yun nga, I think it all boils down to humility talaga. If, kasi, You need to humble yourself. Now, oh, I need to work on this always uh, to keep my form to play at a competitive level and to keep up with the standard of the sport. So I think just if they just keep that in mind, they're gonna go really, really far. And I think they can. Mm-hmm. A lot of they're all good. They're all really good in terms of mental strength and uh, maturity. Yeah, hopefully, and I really want them to. I mean, I saw them like champion did sila like when I'm here in DLSU. Because I mean, first tier, wala nang yare. I mean, for the basketball, we had that season we didn't win, and then never natuloy yung volleyball. So, saan mag champion sila bago mag graduate? Ago uh, mag. <laughs> they have the potential. I I really. Uh-huh. Yeah. Sana saan. So, in yung isa pang part of your volleyball career that's not maybe well-documented or not well-talked about by others was the beach volleyball part of it. So, paano naman nag-start yun? Like, were you just invited for tryouts or did you, like, uh, go with... You wanted to try out, so you asked them. How was the process like? Because you were there since season 78, I think. You were, like, reserved with Sila Kim and Sid, I think. Yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, I was playing beach volleyball uh, pag off-season sa Canada when there's no indoor season, our coach wanted us to play beach volleyball. And I was playing competitively, but la- not to the extent na, oh, we want to be champions. Like, we just did it because we, we, did, we you know, we didn't want to lose um, touches on the ball. So, yun. I played it for fun slash competitively. And then, nung pagdating ko dito, uh, si coach kasi every year, he would <laughs> parang try out. <laughs> training where we all go to the beach volleyball court and see kung sino yung lulutang sa sa buhay. <laughs> Kasi in beach volleyball, like jumping is a different it's a yeah. different dynamic sa beach volley. Kung sino yung may galaw na beach volley. And then I guess he saw na I had background in beach volley and then so yun. Kaya ako naging reserve for um, Ate Kim and Sid and also yeah, uh, yun, yun yung start. And from then on, coach just decided, okay, you're gonna play beach volleyball for the rest of your, I know, and I'm thankful. Because yun then beach volleyball also helps a lot with um, reaction and vertical, so, extra practice and for me. Yeah, you everyday training, more simply, it's like in Rizal it's indoor. So how did you like um uh, improve or enhance on your skills, no for beach volleyball, or is it like basically the same, rin naman na parang training? Kaya when the season pag malapit na yung season, dun lang yata kayo nag-training for beach. Hindi kami katulad ng USC na whole year round. <laughs> <laughs> so competitive, may sariling beach volleyball program sila, whole year round they train. But for us, parang three months, four months before, that's when we start training. And then we go into like yung Ibalong Festival. If you're um, familiar with that, it's like a festival sa school. Every year, it's like a beach volleyball tournament. So we joined that just to 
test out our the partnership that coach chooses for that year. So yeah, yun, yun yung, ano, yun yung process. Hindi <laughs> <laughs> super intense na ano. Parang we, we practice mga once, twice uh, a week for beach volleyball. Oh, okay. For three or four months. <laughs> Yeah. So, kamusta naman yung differences? Kasi, syempre, people might only play indoor. Like, I don't know a lot of people that actually play beach volleyball. So, for you, like, syempre, what's harder, I think? And uh, what, how do you think each, each of it uh, like, gave you the benefit of playing both? Parang ganun. How did beach help you and indoor? How did indoor help you in beach? Parang ganun. Uh, for beach, it's more of beach helping me for indoor. Oh, Kasi- okay. It's more things from beach you can apply to indoor, whereas I guess, wait, yeah, yeah, from beach. Mm-hmm. So I think the yun nga sabi ko kanina, the reaction it helps with the reaction and as well as uh, vertical because moving in sand it's like it sucks you in so mm-hmm. effort to to move and I think in quickness also it helps. And no mental strength because you're bat- battling different um, environments. Yeah, for sure. Conditions, <laughs> iba-iba. And super rainy. There, oh. there, there, there were games na like visibility was really hard because <laughs> pouring. Um, yeah, you the different elements that you have to uh, fight, as well as the fatigue that you you encounter. Because there's only two of you, right? Also. Communication, I guess. Because mm-hmm. there's only two, right? so you really have to communicate, and that also translates to beach ball, uh, to indoor. Because you also have to communicate with six other people, whereas in beach there's only two of you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, from a fan's perspective, I feel that beach is difficult. Like sometimes, pag spin night, parang dalawa lang kayo kahabol compared to pag indoor. And pero pero may pwedeng sumalog ay nun. So dapat parang mas versatile ka. You can be able to parang play libero, center spiker. Kailangan parang kaya mo lahat. Kung hindi, parang hindi ka pwedeng maging effective or magaling sa beach. Parang ganun. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you, na, yun nga, you have a lot more coverage, di ba? Yeah. So you really have to know your movement together. Like chemistry needs to be solid, and I think I I felt that with all of my partners, but especially Kay Justine, because I I think I trained with her the most. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So in in DLSU, Shamper, you were with Coach Ramil for I don't know how many years. So like five years, five six years. So maybe what could you say was the time wherein he really got mad at you or something, and but you got challenged to perform, and it's like it stuck to you. Like your motivation, yun natalaga ng pinagalitan kanya. And how did it help you flourish or it bolstered your game up? Oh, <laughs> ah, senior year na, kasi iba talaga yung pressure, yung talaga ng galit na ano senior year because iba talaga yung pressure. With sabi nga nila, with great power comes great responsibility. Yeah. So in my in my senior year, I felt the burden na ano din ng mga seniors to to lead and to not crack under to be the last one to crack under pressure and to not show that you're mm. cracking under pressure. <laughs> yun talaga. Um, I think yun kasi he really pushed us mentally also during our senior year. And I think it was just a preparation for the games to come. And I'm thankful that he 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 did do that. Although it was pretty, it was hard. And you know, you you already know that you're having a bad day, and then coach is there, like <laughs> yeah. even more so. Na nag-add pa dun sa stress mo. Because it was it it came into fruition. Then nung kahit nung one game na nilaro namin, it was. Mm-hmm. It became lighter for us. The game. It became everything became more manageable, and we were more more calm because coach. Sinanay kami ni coach yung the uh, sa training and stuff. Yeah. So how about naman yung lesson that he imparted? Maybe there was an instance that he talked to you like nag hard to hard kayo or something. Na talagang to matak din siyo yung parang lesson nyan or yung quote nyan or yung motto. I don't know. Like. Or was it more of like a mix of everything? So, paano naman for you, like personally? Uh, I think yung pinaka memorable ko na closest thing I got na heart to heart kay coach. Uh, yeah. <laughs> was nung ano? 
uh, second year because I was just getting in for it was my first time to be part well to seri- to be really seriously part of the first six and big shoes to fill at the era mm-hmm. right parang like at first you're like oh my god they were champions now we have to you know mm-hmm. keep that up and uh nung isang tune up i remember this distinctly i didn't really perform well but coach said na i'm not looking for Sid or Adam. i'm looking for the best version of you and i see the potential na that you can to to help this team that i saw in Sid and Ara but you have to do it your own way you don't have to follow them you just have to be the best version of you and i think that um once you show that na yun na you're just gonna you're gonna go uphill from there and that really stuck to me na i didn't need to be someone else i didn't have to literally fill in their shoes but to 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 to, to play the role that i'm supposed to play within the team to help the it team excel for that season so yun yun dun ako na ano talaga na motivate to yeah, I- I feel that if you try to, I don't know, reach the standard of them or the expectation that the fans have for Ara or Sid, it's gonna like it's gonna really hard for you. Like it might affect your game pa negatively. But if you play on your own, you never know. You might actually reach the level without thinking about it now, because you're just going with the flow, going with the system. And I believe it really happened with you, nga, since you said in the first year, maybe na hirapan ka pa. But in the following years, na kita naman yung improvement mo and how. Yeah, you flourished under Coach Ramil's system, and you know, I think that really helped you. That in, that communication, that encounter that you had with him, it really maybe lifted the pressure off, and it just made you play your own game and your own strengths, also and weaknesses in volleyball. Yeah, I just had to be reminded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you didn't know that what he's good at, also. Exactly. Yeah. So as we wind down to the final moments of this interview, it's like a few questions long that I normally ask my guests also. So one of it is about the uh, social injustice in the U.S. Like during the bubble, I'm not sure if you know in the NBA, like the WNBA and NBA players, they were very vocal in their uh, um, what's that their beliefs and their um, stance on the social issues, like the George Floyd incident and the elections in November. Of last year, they were very vocal, and people think that malaki yung impact nila in regards to the George Floyd, the guilty na yung pumatay sa kanya and yung si Biden ngayon na nalo as president. So, sure here comparing it to the Philippines, parang I feel um we're not as vocal, like the athletes are not as vocal in expressing their thoughts. So it can be a variety of things. Maybe they're educated and knowledgeable naman pero it's just our culture that we're not as vocal like in social media about what we believe in like not everyone's like that talaga compared to maybe the americans and maybe yeah i don't know other reasons that you can think of pero in your opinion um do you think athletes could uh, really provide a huge influence to the social and political issues kasi you guys can like amplify your voices kasi you have a huge following like lalo na volleyball ngayon mataas yung following na like second na yata sila behind basketball. So what's your thoughts on that, on athletes being more vocal and tweeting about it or posting about the social and political issues? Yeah, I think it's important for us to use our voices for something that we believe in. You should, and for me, I don't post that much kasi I was, you know, <laughs> under the sun. <laughs> You're also carrying whatever I vote, uh, I voice out. I was also carrying the Lasal name. Well, I'm still carrying the Sal, the Lasal name, but you know, for me, I think I'd be more vo- vocal now. Now that I'm not uh, under the LSU volleyball, that since you know, not that not as much scrutiny, I guess would be bestowed upon me. But I think it is important to for athletes to use our voices to speak out on injustices, especially if it happens within the country. And I think I, I saw naman din, like at the ARA, at the, like everyone in our team, nung sagang error bill, a lot of us repeat, like repeated, reposted stories about it. 
and um we had someone at the K who was also a former DLSU um uh, athlete she our, our former teammate also at of at the era and at the chat like she had someone talk about like a lawyer talk about the the, the disadvantages of that bill and so we we have, we informed ourselves before um posting about it so that we know that we are taking the right stance and we're not just going with the the trend kumbaga but there's a lot of people who 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 uh, aimlessly rep- repost about things that oh Kalanela, they were at the right side of the the battle. Really, they were actually um, being led otherwise. So I think it's important to inform ourselves and to to speak out about injustice, injustices. Especially for me, also, like what if I see um, about anything that has to do with race or LGBT or um, uh, religious matters, ganon. Um, as much as possible, I want to educate, especially now, the bayon sa Palestine. Hmm. Yung issues sa Palestine, yeah. I'm trying to educate myself about that because it's so brang. It's so true because we ourselves are we were colonized by so many people. Nahina natin ala national identity natin, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it it's hard for us to get out of that mindset. How it it has in, impacted. Our way of thinking, the young colonization, na yon, na we think that we, uh, you know, it's as simple as yung mga sa advertisement about in whitening, right? Like, why, why would you be ashamed of the the natural beauty that's been given to you? Because mm-hmm. of yung all that instilled um, hate towards yourself that was, you know. Uh, injected into our culture, diba? <laughs> I have a lot to say. I have a lot yeah. to pero I wanna, as much as possible, at first, I wanna inform myself before I do speak up about things. But yeah, athletes, especially in Philippines, we have a lot of fans na, ano, na it, it's nice. It's, I, I think it's important for us to use our platform in our voice. Yeah, I agree also with everything you said. Like, lalo na malapit na elections, like it's in one year. So, kung mas vocal yung athletes, yeah, it's really gonna help and be able to, I don't know, maybe influence people. Because baka may mga Filipinos that kunwari lang may candidate or something, just binoto lang nila dahil sinabig ng ganito o ganito. Pero if you educate them, like ano yung platform, ano yung beliefs nitong candidate A, B, C, D, ganun, parang it's better for them to make the right decision. And I think that will help also. Yeah, like you mentioned, the bayon sa ano, the election. Mm-hmm. Important to show yung mga ma offer nung candidate na na yun. And what's hard in Philippines, even nung kay Duterte, right? Before he became president, like my family was pretty okay, cause cause we live pretty close to Davao, and we saw how yeah. he got in Davao, and it was yeah. really it's good in Davao, yeah. Well, mm-hmm. Became president, everything just went downhill. <laughs> we yeah. were like, this, is, this wasn't the du- the Duterte that we we no. know. Yeah. So like, I think it's also really hard for people to for people to stay um, true to themselves and to their values when they become in into someone with that much power and responsibility. It's hard to keep. Yun. yeah, Duterte he changed he changed it from the mayor the simple mayor of Davao to to becoming the president and I think same then if let's say Vico Vico right Tahin Soto then magaling ngayon di ba and I'm scared na so I hope he's different na yeah because I see I see that the future could be Pretty good if he if he if he comes into power if into a position mm-hmm. that can really impact Philippines and I hope the mga ibang candidates yun na natin ngayon in the coming up election will be happy. Yeah. Due to what they say, not just buying votes, you know. Ang sad din if people bought votes. Mm-hmm. They pay you know yung mga five oh 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. They a lot do that talaga. Kahit yung lower like positions, not necessarily the higher ones. Yeah. 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 Even this governor or like yung mga barangay. Canon, yeah. yeah. So For, I I also hope that I don't know, parang yung I think it's really different like yung leadership also. Maybe if you're a leader in like a smaller community, it's easier. Syempre pa bansa na yung i-lead mo or pag senator na yung mga ganong gravity na or yung magnitude of what you're leading. Maybe it's harder. Kaya it's, you're still saying mo, it's different for in kung city lang or pag bansa na yung nililid mo. Kaya siguro, yun, yeah, nagkaganito. Yeah. And yeah. like, with other countries pa, diba? Like, mga alliances and everything. It's all, uh, it's all like strategic game. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and not only the Philippines, like even the other countries are having trouble also with like their government. See Biden, like <laughs> a lot of people are disappointed, but it's he's better than Trump. But yeah, it is what it is. It is what it is. Yeah. At least Trump, but still pretty bad. <laughs> ganon. Yeah, parang ganon na nga yung sabi nila. Yeah. <laughs> So, itong one more question that I ask. It's also from, I also ask my other guests. It's, if you had a choice to have dinner with five people, like any five people, every, uh, any five people, not be kailangan volleyball or sports, who would you have dinner with? It could be five people dead or alive. Wow. Hirap <laughs> yun. <laughs> First would be Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, second would be Nina Simone. Uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Si Jose Rizal. <laughs> yeah, some people say Jose Rizal also, like one of my previous guests. Because they think, uh, they want to know how what he thinks of. Like, he's so smart. Or not. I don't know if Jose Rizal or si, ano? Andres Munefasio. <laughs> si General Luna. <laughs> oh, General Luna. <laughs> that would be really interesting. <laughs> um, and um, they're all dead. Isang alive. Let's see. Si Malala Yusakzai. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, that's a great. I don't know. It's not like sports related. All like all of them were not sports related. But then it's really good to learn from them. Like dinner lang, mga two to three hours. You're gonna learn a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So for the final question, I also ask my guest this. Uh, who would you suggest that I could guest here on the DVD show? Like it doesn't need to be volleyball. Like by the volleyball, like any other sport, naman. Like I I invite people across any sport. And who do you think I should invite that maybe will be G or They also have a great story that they could share. Hmm. Uh, Ate Duki has a great story. Uh, who else? He may then. Well, volleyball. <laughs> yeah, but I've interviewed a good amount of volleyball players. Like Salasal, Des, yeah, Desiree, Don, and Melissa going. Oh, um, Paul, I mean, C. Theo, Laxon. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We interviewed him in ano, La Salian, like a few months back. Yeah. Would be a good. He would be a good one. He would have a really interesting story for you. <laughs> yeah, he... for sure. Yeah, that's unique. Also, like not a lot of podcasts will have that kind that side. Yeah. So yeah, and see Ina Palacios also. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We I I didn't interview her because like when we were supposed to I got assigned to that article but then I wasn't available for the interview so I was just the one messaging her on Facebook at for La Salian before but I wrote the article I just wasn't there for the interview because I had class at the face to face so yeah you knew she can't can't trust you rookie of the Astrana Astrana oh yeah yeah yeah. I, I remember like I didn't know her yet during until that year that's like oh galing nito galing nito As a former basketball player, I was just, whoa, <laughs> this is on another level. Yeah. So that's it. Uh, thank you so much, Din, for joining me here on the DVD show. I really appreciate it that you gave me some of your time, even if, you know, you're busy with training and all these other stuff that you do. So do you have any final message before you go? Uh, stay safe, double mask, and sanitize always. 
and I'll check in with your family once in a while. <laughs> okay, so thank you so much again. And before you go, is it okay if we take a picture? Okay, I'll take it from here now. One, two, three. Okay, thank you so much, Tin, for joining me here on the DVD show and stay safe. Ingat. Okay, bye-bye.